full James Bond bad guy. Is that what you're saying? Because <laughs> so I'm close. down. Today we have ADJD by Absolution Brewery. They're located in Torrance. And this is actually the cool part. Whiskey Barrel Aged IPA. Who would have ever thought we'd see a day where it's a whiskey barrel aged IPA. This is from their Angels, De Angels Demise IPA. That's the AD part of uh, it. And I think the JD stands for Jack Daniels. That's probably the barrel they found. So that's what they aged it in. And uh, let's see what this guy is all about. But not in like the movie. Like... All right, let's, get, let's first off, definitely like Charles has been saying in Bob Mark, Hazy, you put up the light, you can't see through it. That's pretty much off the bat. Definitely dark. Uh, when I first opened it, I got a big old whiff of uh, that whiskey stench right when you go in for that shot, though. <laughs> and uh, let's uh, let's go in for that sniff. Okay, definitely for sure. This is Jack Daniels, uh, just a shot of whiskey. But I would say. From far away, you definitely get that alcohol burn in the nostril when you go in. It's a lot sweeter. I think uh, maybe the hoppiness of that, of, this is an IPA, so the hoppiness of the beer maybe kind of helps cut through some of like the worst parts of the shot and make it a lot sweeter, hopefully, maybe. Yeah, I'm saying, oh man, whiskey, definitely. Definitely smelling whiskey, but the crazy thing is, it's sweet. Definitely sweet, more like a Woodford Reserve than a like uh, I don't know, a J uh, Jack Daniels. Like it's not like a generic. It's like a, and it's not like I wouldn't feel like if I were drinking the whiskey that this was aged in, it wouldn't be rough. It would be a smooth whiskey. Um, very like a like a southern type whiskey, um, something like American whiskey I would say, yes. uh, southern American. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I definitely had the whiskey barrels off the bat. Definitely it smelled like a barrel aged. Got me excited. Um, the more I'm smelling it, the more hops you kind of get. The more you kind of get a, a little bit of character of the body i'm still kind of not sure where this is going to end up if it's like citrusy i don't know if it if it will be citrusy makes me want to say so because the haze and the color uh however i'm just kind of excited to see where it goes if it's going to be bitter if it's going to be sweet kind of like we're saying but really hard to kind of put a finger on the ipa part All right, guys, since we have now smelled this beer, let's give it a little taste. Oh. Oh. That's weird. Mm-hmm. Okay, it definitely... It, oh, it's funky. It, okay, see see if I'm going uh, if I, my head's right here. It's like, does it not start so out like funk. a freaking sour? Oh, yeah. Sour funk for sure. Like, this is supposed to be a whiskey IPA. I get, okay, you definitely get the age, whatever whiskey aged barrel. You get that, but it starts out like, I would almost say, a funky sour citrusy beer. And then it's like, no, I'm barrel aged in whiskey. <laughs> and then at the end, it's like, like, I'm lingering as a whiskey barrel aged. Okay. I was going to say lingering like the IPA, but. I don't get the IPA. I, this, uh, this one's weird. Yeah, I'm gonna go. Let's go right forward, I guess. It's crazy. Right when I was drinking, I got a, like a very like piney-ish smell, um, sour for sure. And I'm thinking that has to do probably with the whiskey barrels that they've aged them in. Um, they typically say that if a whiskey barrel is used more than a few times, um, that it starts to develop sour notes. And then so over time, your beer becomes sour. So if you continue to put your beer in these barrels without, say, I don't know, uh, burning them, 
Um, typically what happens is all those microorganisms still are alive and then they turn your beer sour. So I feel like that's where it's going. I, I, that's, that's why you're not getting that IPA taste, you're getting that sour taste. But it's not, not in like a bad way. You know, I'm not like upset. I wouldn't have said that. Like, it's still good. It's weird. Just different. Funky. Funky for sure. In a good way. Yeah, definitely that funk right off the bat. And then that kind of citrus also, I think it is there. Um, to go along with your what you're saying about the bacteria and things that hang out in the barrels. They're lingers, man. Fucking yeah, lingers. Jeez. So you gotta burn them. I think you're right, though. Yeah, it's, it is hard to sanitize those barrels. And actually, I, I feel like burning, is that how they do it? Is they'll... After they age things in it a couple times the sec to give a second life, they'll just rechar it and yeah, start over. Cause... But I don't know how long barrels last. Like, I mean, typically though, like, okay, so imagine you're a whiskey or, or a bourbon maker or so on. You probably have bourbon those. Bourbon can only use it once. You probably have all those barrels sitting there for like 50 plus years, depending on however long. You don't reuse that barrel. You end up taking that barrel and selling it because it's not worth anything to you anymore, right? So once it's sold then to the consumer, which would be a brewery or say us as a home brewer, I imagine that we could only use it so many times after that before it starts to develop sour notes. Right. You have to like leave stuff in there constantly, I imagine. Yeah. But then at that point, you just start making sours. I got, Why? I got a unique question for it. I guess different question. Seeing as this is kind of... I don't know, a, a different beer, and I feel like it's it's pretty enjoyable and festive and, and out there. I, what kind of music would you pair this with? Music? Okay. Like, if you're, like, sitting there, and you're drinking this beer, and you're out on the patio, and you're just kicking back, what are you listening to while drinking mm. this beer? Music, you say. I got a weird one. And then I'm gonna catch you guys off guard based on how you guys know me. This beer, the first thought that came into my head for music is a Renaissance fair. <laughs> to have medieval knights everywhere fighting, eating a freaking turkey leg. And like, you know, we're like, yeah, living the life to the fullest right meow. Yeah. That would be good. <laughs> oh my goodness, yeah. Yeah, Renaissance Fair or any, anything medieval. <laughs> Magic King Arthur's freaking circle table thing. You got these, these bad boys, and you can have Excalibur in your own hand. Like... Oh man, yeah, that's a good one. I mean, I think if I'm sitting on a patio and I'm kicking and I'm drinking this beer, I mean, there's probably a bunch of different songs I'd, I'd probably listen to and, and people that I'd probably be into, but... I think the ones that are right off the top of my head, like, dude, I could totally be sitting there listening to, like, some Queen, some Led Zeppelin, drinking this beer, and just having a good old time, like, singing along, drinking some ACDC, maybe, playing a little bit of Thunderstruck. Um, with the label, we got it. Yeah, I mean, with the label. Like, I could totally be listening to some classic rock and just, just rocking out, having a good old time on the porch, drinking this beer. So I, I see myself drinking this at a like a ska show. Uh, our friend John Shear's band, Fell to Victory, has played at some uh, fairly CD bars. Uh, you can check them out, the link below. There's uh, a weird just kind of like mix there of like funk and upbeat, but then dirty and grungy from the location and just that weird juxtaposition. I think kind of goes along too with that, the whole festival vibe of you're in this big place. There's tons of new people all around you. You don't really know what's going on, but you're drinking this awesome, like... Just having a good time. Just weird beverage that's like, yeah, like, fuck yeah. <clears throat> all right. If you guys could rate this beer, what would you rate it? So, kind of like you mentioned and kind of like Jeff said, and kind of like my question was alluding to is a, a festival beer, right? This is something that you want to have while you're having a good time, concert, festival, so on. So for me, this is actually a four. Um, 
I don't think I would see myself buying anything higher than that. Uh, but if I'm at a festival, if I'm at a concert, rocking out, hanging out on the porch, chilling, I'd be I'd be drinking this beer. I could see that. So what I would rate this beer is, you know what? I would definitely rate this a five. I'd buy it in large format. Because you know what? I think life should be about interesting things. And this beer is interesting as fuck. Hold, hold the phone. Hold, hold, hold the phone. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Jeff Waugh, rating an IPA a five? Oh shit, sure, yeah, you're right. That's how good this beer is. Damn, That's how good this beer is. Yeah, right, right. I did not expect that. <laughs> okay, so part of the mystique of this beer for me is the fact that I bet you if we bought another bottle in a different year that it would taste different. And kind of like you were saying, probably because of the different barrels or the process that was used. I think, yeah, I think my rating would be uh, somewhere between four and a five. You know, I definitely buy if I'm going out. Uh, although something about this beer is just it's strange and unique and it's almost like the unicorn so it's like if i bought it at a bar would it be the same so i don't know actually at this beer itself i'd probably buy more just to kind of lock in this flavor and have it on hand and honestly to like almost age a little bit too i would like to see kind of how this how this ages so uh yeah definitely a five What up, everyone? This is season two of Bring It to the Table, Bigger, Bolder, Stronger. We, we are, are hot curious. curious. Cheers. Cheers.